Hey everyone, welcome to the Uke Stuff channel. Today we're looking at the Lava Music Lava U Concert Ukulele with the Free Boost Acoustic Slash Amplified Pickup System. It's a pretty crazy ukulele that just came out this year. It's been on a few other channels, so there are a bunch of reviews out there worth taking a look at. And this is going to be a pretty lengthy review. So. If you don't want to watch a long video, I encourage you to, but if you don't want to, I have a one minute review, I have a written review, which is not usual. Uh, it's part of my agreement to do this for Lava that I would write a written review that is on ukestuff.info if you want to check it out. And of course, the uke guide, which I use to summarize all these thoughts, is available at ukestuff.info as well, or ukeguide.info. Both places will take you to the same place. Now, just for um, disclosure, this instrument was sent to me for review by Lava Music, so you got to keep that in mind. It does make it a little bit harder to be completely objective. Now, I was not paid to do this review, but when you're sent an ukulele to review, it does change your thinking a little bit, and you also don't like making people angry. So if you buy your own ukulele and you buy your own copy of it, then you don't feel bad because it was your money that, that bought it, but if somebody sends it to you, you don't want to hurt people's feelings. So I will do my best to be honest with you in this review and tell you uh, situations in particular where it's subjective versus objective thoughts. And by the way, that's what this entire process is all about. So on the Ute Guide, it's modeled after uh, the appliance guide that you get in the United States when you buy an appliance. I do a one-page summary of the subjective issues with the ukulele, the objective issues with the ukulele, and then a, of course, a subjective summary of the instrument, which again is my opinion. And before we even begin, if you're interested in this ukulele, I do suggest that you watch a few other reviews because it isn't cheap. And as a result, you're going to spend some real money. You should go into it fully knowing what you're going to get. So let's begin with the actual review. This thing is unique. Um, in the one minute ukulele review, I call it well-rounded, and that's literal and figuratively. I think it is a well-rounded instrument, again, in actual shape, but also just in its functionality, and we'll define that a little further as we go. It costs, this one is $379. They only make a concert or tenor model. I think there are six or seven colors. They all have a little bit of sparkle, though it's hard to see in this lighting. Um, they did a special study to see who their market would be, and they found out that a majority of their potential buyers would be female. So there are a number of colors that were designed and tested to be popular with some female customers, but there are colors that uh, would appeal to people that don't like those colors well, like, for example, this blue color, which I like. In fact, I'm wearing almost the same exact color. So. Um, there are a lot of choices with this, and you can also get it without the pickup system. I think that starts at $2.99 on the concert, and then you can get it in the tenor size with the pickup system for up to $3.99. And with that, you're going to get a pick, which is interesting. It's a special pick that they've created. We'll talk about that, I hope, a little bit later. And then you'll get the space case. So let me hang up this ukulele for a second and let's just address the space case in terms of what you get. This is crazy. You carry it around, your ukulele shows right through it. In fact, I'll put it in there and let you see what that looks like. There is a catch that holds well at some points, but other times it doesn't. And that makes me a little nervous. We'll talk about that too. But I'm gonna throw the lava U into the space case. And there's a spot in here for the charging cable that it comes with and everything else. But when you carry your instrument around, on kind of a unique thing, not only is it protected, but everybody gets to see what you have. And that's an interesting approach. It has some little feet on the back, um, metal handles, but nothing else. So when I'm talking about the space case here, and I'll see if I can get this opening in, there we go. There's a little catch button to release and let it go. I'm gonna hang up the Lava U. Um, it's padded as you can see. But the two concerns I have with the space case, and again, you really shouldn't include a case in terms of a review of an instrument, but this space case is a part of what makes the Lava U special. 
And the two things I'm worried about, for example, are the scratching of this window or the breaking of the plastic with use. That's a concern of mine. Um, the handle carrying it over long period, this is a heavy case just by itself. So the, the handle carrying it by yourself would be a concern of mine. And the fact that there's no like shoulder strap. And the what I use as an example in my written review is that if I go, for example, to the Los Angeles Ukulele Festival and I carry this around all day, my hand is gonna hurt from where these metal handles are. My, you know, it's heavy and there's no way to put it around your back. So it's, the, the negative side is there's a practicality issue. This is wonderful for storing it at home, you know, quick trips somewhere. But if you're gonna wanna carry it around all day, not a great solution. And then again, I'm a little concerned about it getting scratched. So those are my thoughts about the case. I think it's wonderful. And I, I've asked myself over and over again, would I prefer that they didn't include the case and make it cheaper? you know, include a gig bag. And I think where I'm at is I wish they included a gig bag too, is, is where I'm at. Even at the same pricing, for that same price point, I'd love it if there was a bag that would be included for those other uses as well. And then I think I'd feel better about it. So as a result, when we're talking value of this instrument, I do think generally you're getting very close to paying what it's worth. And remember, you're getting the space case, you're getting a modern dreadnought style ukulele, you're getting an electronics package, um, and a few other kind of nifty features in here as well. A slightly radius fretboard, some really cool tuners, uh, a neat sound hole, and you know, it's got a lot of features. Obviously the pickup as well that you can uh, plug into a system. So there are a lot of really good things here. I think you're getting very close to its value. So the other comparison I keep making is that it's a lot like an Apple product. This reminds me of my Apple Pencil in many cases and my old iPod and things like that. And you do sometimes pay a premium for a certain level of quality and that quality is all over this ukulele. So some people would probably pay double for it. Um, other people will not be happy with the price at all because again when you come down to it it still is a plastic based ukulele so i think it's right about at where its value is so let's talk build quality it is remarkably well built and i know that's easier to get with an injection molded instrument but they've done a really good job all the pieces are there and they generally work together really well it's flawless in its build the paint job is fantastic um, it's just really well built together with really thoughtful choices with everything you get from the case all the way down to how the instrument looks. One of the things that I like to do is to see what's happening on the inside of an ukulele. We're not going to see a whole lot here, but let's go take a look on the inside with the internal Ute cam. Okay, just for fun, let's go into the lava U to see what's all inside there. Without too much inspection, you can see them the little speaker, the activator that goes on the back, this is driven by the electronics and what causes the effects that you hear. Um, I'm going to try to turn over here. This is the L2 Mini developed with acoustic electronics. And let's see if I can get the, the buttons here, if I can get far enough. So these are clearly labeled on the inside, even though you really can't see them from the outside. You've got the USB port and then the choice of chorus and delay and then your on off button right there all right there's not gonna be a whole lot more to see here but let's just go in here a little bit and if i get the angle right you can see the breathe net honeycomb surface of the soundboard and you can see the pickup wire coming out of the bridge and there's your output jack down there and that's pretty much all you really need to see here. Otherwise, it's all just going to be dark plastic that's connected. And that's the inside of your Lava U. Now, in terms of appearance, it's really pretty plain, but it's futuristic. So that's going to get you some attention. And um, I really like the Lava Music reflective logo down there. Truly, when it comes to looks, there are only two things I don't like about it. First of all, it says Lava U in a very plain print. 
it would have been cool if that lava you could have been reflective like the bottom or something I don't even know if it needed it to be honest with you because you've got the lava logo there um, the other thing I don't like about it and this shows my own playing is that I find myself when I'm playing occasionally I like to see the fretboard markers and there are no front facing fretboard markers there are side markers but just not on the front so in terms of appearance I think it looks pretty good and of course when you throw in the space case now that's where your appearance and your notice goes right out the window everybody will see you at the ukulele club when you drag that or if you're a teacher and you drag that into school your kids will lose their mind because it's really cool i mentioned this in the written article but my wife came downstairs where i keep most of my ukulele stuff and she walked down and she saw the space case and immediately opened it and checked it out so, and she does not play ukulele she tolerates my love of the ukulele and she even noticed it so ukulele players and non-ukulele players will be noticing this thing not only because of the ukulele and its futuristic looks but because of that space case now in terms of availability if you want one of these there are a couple things you can do number one they are on sale through amazon so you can get them through amazon and then the other thing is the Uke Republic in Georgia, United States, is carrying these when they get them in stock. They do sell out of them, though, as soon as they get them in stock. So two places you can find these instruments. As for playability, a lot of good choices here. It has really low action. The action at the first fret is ridiculously low. I'm not saying in a bad way. It is like you couldn't go any closer and get any less action needed to play up at the first fret it's at 0.25 millimeters or so and we'll get back to that later and the action at the 12th fret is 2.5 millimeters so the action is wonderful the neck has a nice shape and that matte paint is textured and has a really good feel the fretboard has a little bit of a radius to it which makes it good um, it is heavy so you do feel that weight when you're holding it but in general it's really quite nice to play. The nut width is generally 35 millimeters and the spacing is pretty standard. Uh, if I was going to ask for anything to improve, I might have said maybe a little bit wider nut, maybe a little bit wider nut. And for me, even a little more of a radius, I think would have made it even easier to play. That's being super, super picky. Quite honestly, most people will pick this up and have no problems playing it at all. And of course, fret ends with it being a uh, plastics based product are not going to be an issue for the entire life of the product. The other thing I've noticed is that I have the tendency to play too hard with my left hand. A lot of us do. We're used to um, having to use that robotic grip in order to get chords out of ukuleles that aren't set up right. Well, with this one, if I press too hard, I drag it massively out of tune. So uh, this is where I really notice it. Here's the E minor chord, All right? Just takes a little bit of pressure to play it and get a clear sound. But if I press like I normally do, you hear how badly it goes out of tune? So one thing you will notice if you buy one of these and play it is that if you play with too much pressure, you're going to be playing out of tune because it just requires so much less effort to play. Now let's talk about sound. And here is a really rough road for me. My ear likes high frequencies and high harmonics with the ukulele. That's me. And I know there are some people that are like me. And I also know that there are people that are not like me and what they're looking for is an ukulele with a little bit more mid and lower frequency response this ukulele lives in that lower frequency sort of realm the the sound is clean you hear all the notes very cleanly but where it lives and where the resonation is is sort of deeper and as I watch video reviews on YouTube of this instrument and hear people talk about it, people that love this instrument love that middle bass sound. I'm a person that likes a little more sparkle in the sound, and I don't think a change of strings would do it. So the strings actually are pretty wonderful strings. I'm not sure what they are, but they, they work great. So in my brain, for what I love as an ukulele, 
this is not it in terms of sound. And that's not trying to be mean. That's just what my ear hears. Now, that doesn't mean I wouldn't want it. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't buy it. But if I did, if I was buying this, I probably would not be buying it for the sound myself, for what I like. Although I know people that would for the sound. So that's where you get this whole subjective issue with this instrument. Now, as it comes to volume, the ukulele isn't really that loud. It's not soft by any means, but it's just not super loud. And as I mentioned, it does respond in all the frequencies, but where I'm getting the most resonance is sort of a deeper body cave resonance with it. And again, if you like that lower resonance on an instrument, um, this is a concert that has some larger instrument tendencies, I think you might really like this one. And then the other thing that I'll say is it's darker than it is bright, partially because of the way I think the body is designed. And again, it just doesn't sparkle like some other ukuleles, but that doesn't mean that the sound is bad. It just, again, focuses on that mid and lower range of the instrument. Now let's talk about, finally, the objective areas where I feel I can breathe more easily in talking about this instrument. Because again, I don't like offending people if there's something that I don't personally like. So it's a concert ukulele. It is 15 inches from the saddle to the nut, saddle to the nut. It has 16 frets. And here's something else that's really cool. I didn't even talk about this. It has metal frets. So on a competitor's product, and I've been trying not to compare this with my other ukuleles. There's a comparison coming, but it's not today. This is a review of this instrument. But on my other polycarbonate ukuleles, some that have carbon fiber in them, the fretboard does not have metal frets. And then people put on other strings, and those strings, especially if they're wound, will eat away at the fretboard. That even happens with ukuleles like the Magic Fluke. Well, that's not going to happen to this one. So if you have been looking for a plastic ukulele, let's say, for example, that you want the one without the electronics, so you could like take it to the beach, but you wanted to use wound strings, well, this finally is an option for you. So, as previously mentioned, it does not have any front facing markers, but it does have side markers. And the body style is dreadnought. Originally, I was thinking it was more of a pineapple, just from what I've seen in pictures. But in person, it's definitely this dreadnought shape, which I think maximizes the amount of surface area that you get. In just talking, they've worked really hard to develop this soundboard to be responsive. It has little honeycombs in it. They call it, I believe, the breathe net system that they've used, and they use it on their guitars as well. So a lot of thought has gone into this shape and the way that it's built the way that it's built it's not just for looks it's also a function behind it the rest of the ukulele is built generally out of that same material so they call it aerosonic which is what the combination of polycarbonate and carbon fiber is so that's the soundboard the body the neck and the fretboard are all made out of that material now, the bridge is worth a look at. It's kind of got a metallic look to it. I, I don't know what it's made out of. I don't know if that's metal. I, don't, I, I just can't tell what this piece is. But what I can tell is that the strings go into these holes. So that's not like some other ukuleles where you tie a knot. It's like a slotted bridge and pull it through. But they go down to here, and then there is a sort of bead or something that holds them into place. So you have a combination of a pull-through bridge with a really steep brake angle on the saddle. And then, so you've got like a pull-through, but then you also have like a little bit of a slotted uh, bridge. So it's a, it's a dual purpose bridge. I just, I'm curious if we'll see any other manufacturers do something like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, the, the fretboard is radius. Uh, when I asked the company, they said about 406 millimeter radius, which would mean basically that section of a 16 inch circle, roughly, give or take. The saddle and nut are made out of that tusk material, which is used by plenty of great ukuleles. The saddle is compensated, so those larger strings get a little more space to vibrate and play in tune with the other strings. 
The finish is a matte paint, which is wonderful to hold. I don't know how durable it is. I don't want to do a scratch test on this ukulele. So to be honest, that's one of the things I am a little bit worried about. If you were going to use this as a travel ukulele, I'm not sure how the paint job would hold up just with this being thrown, for example, in the back of a car or something. You definitely want to put a nod to protecting that surface a little bit. Again, I've been playing it a lot, so it hasn't developed any visible scratches or anything that I'm worried about, but I just think about like it lands on some rocks if you're camping or something like that. I could see that being a problem, and I don't think you're going to find touch-up paint to match. All right, the size of the ukulele from tip to tail is 23 and a half inches long, and it's pretty heavy. It's one pound, 11.4 ounces. So it's getting towards the two pound mark for this ukulele made out of that polycarbonate and carbon fiber aerosonic mixture. The tuners are really cool. <laughs> They're a selling point for the instrument. They're called screwless tuners, and they do look cool. So they function great. So no complaints there. It'd be kind of fun if Lava Music would make those available as an upgrade for people's older ukuleles or other ukuleles. The action, as we talked about, is incredible on this ukulele. It's really low, and it's really easy to overplay it with too much strength as a result. So the action at the first fret, the space between the fret and the string, the bottom of the string, is 0.25 millimeters. Really low, I don't think you can go much lower. And then at the 12th fret is 2.5 millimeters, which is pretty general. So it's set up really well, really comfortable to play. The nut width is 35.06 millimeters, so right at 35 millimeters. And the spacing is 8.45 millimeters between each string. So that's pretty common with a 35 millimeter nut. The thing that will make a little bit of a difference is that radius fretboard. Now it is 27.96 millimeters from G to A at that same first fret, you know, almost 28 millimeters, which is also pretty common. The neck is really comfortable partially because of its shape. It's not that normal C shape that you get with so many ukuleles. It kind of flattens out a little bit, which makes it really comfortable to hold. The neck at the third fret, it's 20.99 millimeters, just 21 millimeters, so it's not thick at all. It's not thin either, but because of the way that it's shaped and how you know quickly it dips down there, rather than this big you know overall bowl kind of shape, um, it's really comfortable in your hand and it's really nicely done. The other two things I wanted to touch very quickly on are a couple of the accessories that come with it. First of all, it came with this Flow Ideal Pick. It's a pick that I think was really designed for the Lava Me or ME guitar. And it's a pick that they're pretty proud about. It comes with your pack of stuff and it's packaged very Apple-like when you get it. So you do get one of those Flow Picks. Unfortunately, with an ukulele, we generally stay away from a solid pick and usually only use a leather or a felt pick partially because of the harshness of the sound but also because um, you can scratch an ukulele. Now maybe this one won't scratch. I don't think I'd want to try it. So while I appreciate them including that pick, um, I personally wouldn't use it or advise others to use it on an ukulele. Then the other thing that I want to talk about is the cable that they include. And generally, cables you aren't going to talk too much about because they're replaceable. Um, this one may be replaceable, but it has something really cool, which is an angled end. And it looks to be USB-C. Not totally sure if it is or if it matches that standard or if it's proprietary. Don't know, but it looks to be USB-C. But it has that awesome L angle. And no, I didn't just accidentally like sit on it and bend it or something or step on it and bend it. But... This then makes it easier to plug into the charging port there rather than trying to get a flat one in there. So that's really good. Just make sure that you don't lose it. I don't even know what the replacement cost is on one of these, but if you can avoid replacing it, that would probably be best. So before we conclude this video, we should also talk about the electronic system and the pickup system that's on this ukulele. It is being called the Free Boost 
pickup system by Lava Music. It is done in conjunction, as you saw with the internal cam, with a company called Double. And Double is working with at least three other companies that I know of. And you generally get the same effects. So ultimately what happens is when you turn this on, and if you turn up the volume and you turn up the effect, you get an acoustic effect while you're playing. You don't need to be plugged in. Now, I will note that those effects are minimally loud. They're not so loud. So um, it's great for practice, but I would not be thinking that you could be sitting at a campfire playing with reverb and let everybody hear the reverb. It's probably not going to work. It's going to get drowned out. Um, also, like in a classroom setting, you're going to want to use the amplification. So as another side note, these effects even sound better coming out with an amplified system. Just so you know, it works that way too. You can be in control rather than uh, the sound person that you're working with. So it's a really nice solution, great for practicing and just for fun. So let's talk about how this actually works. As you saw earlier, there are controls on the inside that are kind of labeled, which are really hard to see. I use reading glasses, so they're almost impossible to see. But on the top, you have power. So if I click that button, you'll see the green light go on. I'll do that again. Got to get the right angle. So the green light comes on and then it's on. The bottom dial is volume. The top volume or the top dial is reverb. So if I turn on the other one, and so now if I actually I'll turn off the reverb all the way. So here's just normal C chord. All right. With the reverb added. You know, you can hear it. But in a classroom setting, in a campfire, you just, you wouldn't hear it. I'm going to turn that down. Then, I don't know which one this is set to, so we'll find out. I'm going to turn up dial number two, which is the mystery dial. So here we go. It's on chorus. Chorus is on there. Let me turn off the chorus. This is a really mild effect on the ukulele itself. Yeah, not much difference there. But there's a switch on the inside, which is a toggle switch. So I can flip that. And now this dial will become, that middle one, will become delay. So listen to that. All right. So you've got delay there with a toggle switch. Now, I do wish you could do all three at the same time. You can't. You have to choose whether you're going to have chorus or delay. And I wish they could have done four buttons on the front so you didn't have to worry about doing that toggle switch. I guess power I'm okay with there. And definitely putting in the power cable works there pretty well too. So again, really nice feature. And what I will say is I would almost suggest if you're going to buy one of these, unless you're planning on swimming with it, don't get the non free boost system ukulele insist on getting the free boost system because if this concert is 299 but you get the electronics for 379 that's not very much money for a major upgrade you cannot buy this system alone for a hundred dollars and you can't retrofit it so in in terms of bargain that's actually a pretty good bargain for the electronics and that's what i would suggest that you do while I'm looking at it too, I forgot to mention elsewhere in this video about the strap connector here. There is a proprietary strap that is, as far as I know, still not available. I, You might be able to work a regular strap there, but this is made for a special strap. I wish that they would have allowed for just traditional straps and not have to use their proprietary strap. That's one of my, my complaints of the instrument. Um, which again are ultimately very few. So let's summarize this entire long review. This ukulele, if there was a competition for ukulele of the year, would be in the running for it. Got a ton of press, a lot of great reaction, and um, a waiting list to order one. And in fact, again, the Euchre Public, as soon as they buy one, it sells out. It's very well rounded again it's just partially a joke but it's absolutely true because this may not be the plastic based ukulele for camping it may not be for the beach but for all other conditions that you can imagine in playing settings this ukulele 
is fit for those with so much flexibility. You don't have to worry about it in a car. You don't have to worry about it getting cold. Um, it's going to be just fine. So it's a really well-rounded instrument that can be used in almost all applications, with the exception of I wouldn't take the electronics near a beach, and I wouldn't beat it up because it is, does have a painted finish, which you probably wouldn't do with a lot of ukuleles, but some travel ukes are purposely made super rugged that you can toss around. I wouldn't do that with this one. I do worry a little bit about the case. I love the case, but I do worry a little bit about it. So I really wish that it came with a gig bag as well. That'd be just great for travel. Now in terms of sound, as I've mentioned in this video, it's not 100% what I'm looking for in terms of sparkling sound. But I did have another thought, which is I do wonder if the sound is also partially engineered to allow you to have a better experience pushing the sound out, especially amplified. So I think there may be something to it. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this ukulele. It's expensive, but you get a high amount of quality and you do get a real instrument. There are enough real players out there performing on these that prove that this is a pretty wonderful little instrument. So as I consider this, mainly, mainly because of price, I, I'm going to give this 4.5 out of 5 stars. If you are a person that loves this look, and if you love in particular that sort of middle range bassy, bassy is the wrong word with any ukulele, except for maybe a bass ukulele, if, if you like that kind of deeper quality of an ukulele, and especially in a plastic, I think that you will really like this ukulele. If you're looking for an ukulele that you don't have to worry too much about, you're willing to take a little bit of care with, this is another great one. If you live in an area with low humidity, another great choice. So 4.5 is really highly recommended. Again, available on Amazon.com, The Uke Republic, and you can find them at www.lavamusic.com. So thanks for joining me in this lengthy review, and I will be back soon with some more geek stuff.